But this uh, is a great group. We're always excited to be in Berlin. It's a data city. It's a tech city. And I'm very happy to be talking to you tonight. Tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about the relationship between access to data and innovation. And then I'm going to talk about common crawl. Not all, I, I don't believe that everything should be open. This is important to say even in the US, particularly so in Europe, doubly particularly so in Germany, where you guys are all very smart about privacy. But privacy is a completely different discussion. It is the best thing to do with your data will be thought of by someone else. So when you enable more people to have access to the data, it's not just more people working on it, it's completely different perspectives. People bring different perspectives and see things that you wouldn't. There's lots of kinds of open data. It doesn't necessarily mean government data. The group that I work for, Common Crawl, the type of data we collect is web crawl data. And the reason we're so excited about this is because as Heiko said in the introduction, the web is the greatest collection of information in all time. It's the biggest collection of information in all time. It's a copy of our world in a digital form. It has information about our family and social lives. It has information about politics. It has information about business and sports. Every aspect of our world is represented on the world web. I mean, it's crucial that anyone who wants access to it has access to it. Up until recently, only large corporations had access to this. Google has a copy of the web. Yandex has a copy of the web. But if someone in this room had an idea that required web crawl data, you would be facing tremendous expense to, to collect it and to store it and to clean it, and you probably wouldn't be able to execute that idea. So that's what we were founded on, that's what drives us, is giving this tremendously valuable data set to anyone who wants access to it. Amazon has been kind enough to give us free storage so it costs us a lot less money to run all this sort of thing. What we've basically done is we've, we've turned Nudge into an extremely fast but cheap system. Uh, so we crawl on order of 40,000 pages a second, of which we get about 2 billion pages per crawl in less than a week. So the common crawl data is about 750 terabytes. Um, it consists of 8 billion pages, um, and we make this available to everyone for free. One of my favorite projects, and I still think maybe one of the most important things to come out of Common Crawl Data, is Web Data Commons. And it was from the University of Mannheim. It's an ongoing project. We really encourage you to check it out, check the URL on the bottom. And the first thing they did is they said, let's use this to study the nature of the web. How have metadata formats changed over time? Watching you, other people are watching us. It's important that individuals, that the people, that any curious person with just a little bit of skill can analyze it and understand it and see what's going on. Yeah. But, but the other thing is, it's completely transparent. We're not handing you a black box that you put a query and get something spit back. So we have a crawler. And it goes out and gets the information that you could use to build your own search engine. You could build your own search engine in like a weekend. And if you wanted it weighted, sorry, I'm getting a little excited. If you, <laughs> if you wanted it weighted or skewed, you know, Google doesn't return the results I want, Bing doesn't return the results I want, I would weight page rank differently. Yeah, you can build your own search engine, I mean, in like a weekend using our data. Uh, this might be hard to answer, but do you have any sense of how much of the web you are crawling now? Uh, yes, as long as you can tell me how big the web is. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a common question, and the answer is no one knows how big the web is. Peter is a project manager of a project called NIA, and it's a marketplace for information and analysis. Um, NIA is a research project. It is part of the Trusted Cloud Research Program. It's funded by the German Ministry of Economy and um, 
energies. And the idea is that we provide a machinery with which you can digest basically your internet data, like web data, and make it easily processable. Yes. We as Neophony, we are one of the data providers because we crawl the web, the German speaking web. One such application we have developed is a query engine over the web which basically provides you an SQL over the web. Neophony operates a news aggregator um, dating back to 2008, I think, with about 50,000 articles per day for German speaking news. Um, which are available for analysis. And for instance, we have built something um, which is a bit like Google Trends. Uh, so you can enter a keyword and then you can see the, um, hi um, the histogram of the time of usage. So you can easily read, uh, read off like peaks where certain events are happening when some topic was important. You're a developer, you can write your own wrappers for your data stores or formats. So we have HBase, um, Paquet, Walk, uh, Solar, Loader. If you have now the, really the potential to do analysis on a really great scale. And what we're proposing with Mia is an execution engine which gives you all the required pieces at hand. The content that we're dealing with is for machines to read. It is purely data.